Hello everyone. So what we're going to see in this video is two different qualitative methods for studying differential equations, namely slope field analysis and phase line analysis. Now the idea of qualitative methods is to understand the behavior of the solutions to a differential equation, but without first solving explicitly for the solutions. So okay, so we're going to start with the slope field analysis method, and in that case I'll focus on what I previously called the world's most important differential equation, which is our first our favorite first-order differential equation. Now, in that case, of course, we know how to solve the equation because it's separable, so we can use separation of variables. But here we'll use slope field analysis to understand the behavior of the solutions without first solving the differential equation. Okay, so let's go back to our equation. So our equation was dy dx is equal to constant times y. So for the purpose of doing slope field analysis, I'm going to fix the constant. So I'll take it to be 1, but you could do it for any other choice of constants. Okay, and then the idea of slope field analysis is to really understand uh, what the differential equation is saying here. So what is it saying? So pick a point, your favorite point, AB, in the xy plane. What is the differential equation saying? What the left-hand side is uh, saying is that the slope of the tangent line to a solution at this point should be equal to the y coordinate of that point, which in this case would be just b. Right? So if you have a more general equation, then your right-hand side will be different. But the equation really is relating the slope of the tangent line to solutions to some particular function of a and b. Okay, so the idea of slope field analysis is to take that now and use this knowledge to get a better understanding of what the solutions will look like. So let me draw the xy plane here. So the idea is the following. So I'm going to pick some random points. So let's pick uh, the point 0, 0 to start with, the origin. What the statement of the differential equation, equation is saying is that the slope of the tangent line to solutions at 0, 0 should be equal to the y coordinate of that point, which is 0. So this should be 0. So this should be horizontal line. So the tangent line here will be horizontal. So I'm going to draw a little line segment here just to remind me that the tangent line of solutions at this point will be horizontal. If I pick the point 1, 0, well, I get the same thing because it has the same y coordinate of being 0. So it's still going to be horizontal. Same thing for all the points here on the x axis. So I'm drawing little line segments to remind me tangent lines at these points will be horizontal. Now, if I pick the point x equals to 0, y equals 1, statement here is that the slope of the tangent line at this point will be 1. So this is a 45 degree slope. And I get the same thing for all points here with y coordinate 1. And if I go to 0, 2, then the slope is 2, which is uh, bigger than 45 degrees. So I get something like this. And so on for all the points with y coordinate 2. And if I go on the negative side, so 0 minus 1 will have slope minus 1, which is 45 degree, but downwards. Get something like this for the points here, and so on. So what I'm drawing here is what is called a slope field. And so now you see that the solutions, wherever they go, should somehow go like this, right? Because they're following, this gives me the, the, the direction of the solution because it gives me the orientation of the tangent lines. On the negative side, they should go like this. And if I give you some initial value, for example, suppose that you're given the initial value that say y at x equals to 0 is equal to, I don't know, 1, for example. So initial value really is choosing a point in the xy plane uh, that the solution will go through. So that's why it's fix fixing a particular solution. So now I'm requiring that my solution should go through the point x equals 1 and y equals to 0, which is this point. So if you're given an initial value, then you can sketch what the solution should look like just by following the slope field. So you see I'll get something like that. Now, of course, here you can recognize that this solution is just the exponential solution. But suppose that we didn't know, we hadn't found the solution first, we could still sketch the graph of the solution just by looking at the slope field, just drawing the slope field, and then just look, looking at what the solution should look like. Okay, so let me try to summarize uh, slope field analysis in the more general setting of first-order differential equations. So slope field analysis is a qualitative approach to understand the behavior of solutions, first-order differential equations, without having to solve them. 
And the idea is the following. Suppose you're given a differential equation dy dx is equal to a function of x and y. This could be arbitrary function here. Now, the idea is to use the, or to really understand what the differential equation is saying. So what it is saying is that the left-hand side is saying that the slope of the tangent line to a solution at a point a, b is equal to the value of the function f, capital F, at the point a, b. In our case, the function was just y, so that was just the y coordinate. In general, this will be more complicated, but we can still extract what the slopes are at arbitrary points just by using the equation here. So the idea of the slope field analysis is just to draw a whole bunch of little line segments at a bunch of random points where you're just calculating what the slopes should be according to the differential equations. And then this whole bunch of line segments all together create uh, the slope field and it gives you a very, very good idea of what the solutions should look like. And if you have an initial condition, then you can pick a particular point on the xy plane that your solution should go through and you can kind of sketch the graph of the solution just using the slope lines. All right, so let's now study our second qualitative method, which is called face line analysis. Okay, so we're going to focus on a very special type of differential equations. These are called autonomous. Key point here is that the right hand side only depends on x, so there's no dependence on the variable t here. Now, this is a special class, but as we saw in class, there's a number of problems. There's actually many problems in physics and biology and so on that can be modeled with equations of this form, so it's an interesting class to study. Phase line analysis, so what is the idea? The idea is to infer qualitative behavior of the solutions simply by inspecting the differential equation, but in a clever way. Okay, so why would we want to do that? Well, you're probably looking at this equation now and you're thinking, well, this is separable, so why can't I just use separation of variables to solve the equation? Well, you can, but in the process you have to integrate dx over f of x, and if the function f of x is complicated, you may not actually be able to integrate it. But perhaps more fundamentally, if you're coming, if you're writing down an equation like that because you're modeling a system in physics or biology, one thing you may want to check is that the solutions you'll get are consistent. The behavior of the solution is consistent with what you expect from physics. Right? And phase line analysis provides a very quick way of checking that right away without solving the equations. So that's a good consistency check that your model makes sense. All right, so what is phase line analysis? The idea is the following. We'll uh, draw a vertical line, which is called a phase line, which is really kind of parameterizing all solutions x of the differential equation. And then what we'll do on this line is very simple. We're first going to identify points where f of x is equal to 0. Why would we want to do that? Well, if the right-hand side is 0, so if x is equal to, for a certain value of x, the right-hand side is 0, what this means is that this provides a constant solution. So we've seen that already, or it's also called equilibrium solution. Because if you set x equals to that constant, then the right-hand side is 0, and the left-hand side is also 0. So these points will give us the constant or equilibrium solutions of the model. All right, and then what next? Well, what we're going to do next is identify regions on this axis, on the face line, where f of x is positive. Why would we want to do that? Well, if the right-hand side is positive, what this is saying is that dx dt is positive, which means that the slope of the tangent lines to the solutions gear will be positive. Or in other words, the solutions will be increasing. So in the regions gear on the face line where f of x is positive, we know that the solutions are increasing. So that's interesting knowledge. And then, of course, we'll also do the same thing but with f of x being negative, which gives us solutions that are decreasing. And really, that's it. So with this very simple analysis, we get a good understanding of the behavior of solutions, and then we can sketch the graph of all kinds of solutions, and you see that it's a very powerful and very quick way of getting an understanding of the solutions of the differential equation. All right, so let me do that in an example to make this a little clearer. So consider the equation that I've just written down here. So we'll see that one in class, by the way. That's a part of uh, the type of equations we use to model population dynamics. It's an example of the logistic model. Okay, so let's do phase line analysis. So I'm first drawing my phase line. This is the vertical axis corresponding to the solutions. And here I'll draw the actual solutions. And as we'll see, just from the phase line, we'll be able to sketch the graph of solutions for all kinds of initial conditions. 
<coughs> first step in the phase line analysis, I find the equilibrium or constant solutions. So in this case, there's two values of x for which the right-hand side vanishes, x equals to 0 and x equals 1. So these, I just put some little dot here on my phase line. And these correspond to constant solutions. On the right-hand side here, these are solutions that are not changing. So they're just horizontal line. This is 1, this is 0. These are my two equilibrium solutions. Okay, now I want to look at the regions uh, between the equilibrium solutions. So if I look at x between 0 and 1, I want to look at whether uh, the functions, the solutions will be increasing, so whether the right-hand side is positive or negative. So if x is between 0 and 1, this is positive, this is also positive, so the whole thing is positive. That's telling me that dx dt is positive, slow with tangent lines positive, solutions are increasing. So what I'll do is put little arrows upwards in the positive direction to show that the solutions in that region will be increasing. If I look at the region where x is negative, this is negative, this is positive, so the right hand side is negative, so the solutions are decreasing, so I'm going to put arrow, arrows downwards. And in the region x greater than 1, this is positive but this is negative, so the right hand side is negative, so again the solutions will be decreasing. So I put some arrows like this. And this is what the phase line analysis is. Alright, now let's translate that in terms of solutions on the other side. So if I look first at solutions where x is negative, what these arrows tell me here is that those solutions will be decreasing for all x negative x. So if I start at this initial condition, for example, I get something like this. Here I would get something like this, and so on. On the other hand, on the other hand if I look at solutions between 0 and 1, they should be increasing for all values of x between 0 and 1. So if I start somewhere in here, I'll get something like that. If I were to start here, I would get something like that, and so on. And for x greater than 1, then it'll be decreasing for all values of x greater than 1. So I'll get something like this, and something like this, and so on. And that's great, because you see now, just by using the face line here, I've sketched the graph of the solutions for all kinds of initial conditions. And that was very, very quick. So now I can look at this and see whether the behavior of these solutions is consistent with what I expect from whatever physical or biological model I'm doing, I'm studying. All right, so that's pretty cool. <clears throat> now, uh, there's one more thing I want to say here, which is uh, some kind of nice property of equilibrium solutions. So I want to distinguish between the two types of equilibrium solutions here. So there's x equals to 0 and x equals to 1, but they're actually very different physically, but also mathematically. So what is different here? Well, x equals to 1 is a constant solution, but it is such that if you look at all the nearby solutions, so all solutions with uh, nearby initial conditions, they all tend toward the constant solution. So when that happens, we say that the equilibrium solution is stable. So let me write that in words. So if x equals x star is an equilibrium solution, then we say that it is stable if nearby solutions, or nearby solutions, tend towards it. And the neat thing here is that you can see that right away from the phase line analysis. So stable solutions correspond to points here where the arrows point towards the point, so point in the direction of the point, right? Because if the arrow here points toward this uh, stable point here, this, uh, this equilibrium solution, that means that the solutions will tend toward it, and here they'll decrease toward it. So that gives me a stable equilibrium. Now x equals to 0 is very different, because now all nearby solutions get away from it. Right? So when this happens, we say that the equilibrium solution is unstable, so it is unstable if nearby solution go away from it. Again, it's obvious from the face line. If you have a point here where the arrows point away from the point, that means that this equilibrium solution will be unstable. And stable and unstable equilibrium solutions, of course, has a, an interesting meaning physically. So let me give you an example. I'm just going to take a little sheet of paper here, curl it like if it was an open cylinder, if I put the pen in the middle, so suppose I'm modeling the uh, motion of the pen, and if I put my pen in the middle, it stays there forever. So that's a constant solution. That's an equilibrium solution. If I start with very nearby equilibrium, uh, nearby initial condition, then it just falls and stays and goes towards the equilibrium solution. So that is saying that the equilibrium, equilibrium solution here is a stable one. That's the same thing as the mathematical definition of stability.
Now, if I, for example, look at open cylinder, but in the other, uh, from the other side, and I put my pen on top of it, it will also stay there forever. So that's also a constant solution. However, uh, or equilibrium solution. But if I start now with very nearby initial condition, then my pen is just falling down. It's going away from the, uh, the equilibrium solution. So that means that the equilibrium solution here is unstable. So that's what it means to be stable or unstable.